Your voice was loud and clear. Neck and neck between Maryland and Boise State for our first Dynasty rebuild, I have decided that Maryland will get another video. My allegiance is clear on this one, and it's time to bleed blue for my first ever Dynasty. Let's go, Boise. 81 overall, two and a half star prestige. It's time to get these guys back to the promised land. And Coach Sir Sponge is gonna be the one to bring them there. He is from Boise State and has a pipeline in the Pacific Northwest area. Blue turf football has been marked by an era of dominance over the last couple decades until you get to recent years you can see that our win totals are just not stacking up like they used to first look at our action panels it's time to set up the recruiting board to start off we're going to add some prospects first thing i do is come over to the interest column and sort it by that so we can get a good look at who's already serious about boise state and the only prospect that has us at number one on their list is paul mayfield and i wonder if it's a long lost cousin of baker mayfield he is out of wyoming let's just go down the list and start adding these guys and Bushman, a four-star prospect, already interested in us. Okay. Now that I got a good amount of prospects interested in us, I went back up, sorted it by the rating filter, and now I'll just add a few more to the board that look promising to me. Preseason recruiting hours, I'm sorted by national rank, and I'm just going to go ahead and scout out some of these guys that we've been adding to our board looking for gems, or hey, if they're just as advertised, that's also good. Offering a scholarship takes a little time, so we're going to go ahead and offer scholarships to practically everyone on the board. As we're doing this, it's important to keep in mind the handy dandy R3 button down here, team needs, and we can take a look at what is essential to bring in in this recruiting class. And so far, it looks like receivers and offense alignment should be the focus. On defense, practically everyone is a need. So yeah, defensive heavy. Jamison Vaughn, our first gem find. We are fifth right now in the preseason rank. We're going to have to send the house on this dude. Some of these names are really funny. Jamie Cheeseman, that's a good last name. Here's a scholarship. Dom Stark, the four-star receiver, a desperate need for our group. It is a gem. KJ Hagen, middle linebacker from Reno, Nevada. We need that. And hold on, I see that correctly. 92 speed, 89 tackle at middle linebacker. Doesn't hurt to scout for quarterbacks. We do have Malachi Nelson and boom, Teddy, a gem three-star from Spanaway, Washington. He'll play up like a four-star. Really hoping some defensive tackles can turn out for us. And booyah, Ty Burrow is that guy bring the house. Sir Sponge in his first year of coaching went with the recruiting archetype. I want to get some guys and build this program sustainably. Preseason first team all Mountain West, Ashton Genty of course, and then we got a couple offense alignment, Cage Casey, Ben Dooley. Good stuff. Can't forget about Ahmed who had over 12 sacks last season, so I'm expecting a big year from him. Andrew Simpson, Amarian McCoy, love to see it. And then none other than Jonah Dalmas and James Ferguson Reynolds. No one special teams is quite built like ours. Second team, redshirt freshman Malachi Nelson. Okay, got a lot of years with him. And then Matt Lauder. No Bronco left behind. Jaden and Herbert also getting a shout out. I advanced the week, so now I can see how I stack up against other schools with our recruits. I sorted it by the interest tab down below. Looks like Diego is not the one. So see that it maybe is a good thing that we check that out so we can spend less time going for Diego, more time going for Jimmy. For sure, you gotta get your gem finds right, so I went ahead and sent the house on Ty Burrow. We better hurry on players like Tyler Bushman here. Utah is trying to pull away and fast, so give him the house and let's get this party started. The two schools I went to in real life, K-State and Boise State, are battling it out for Dom Stark, so that definitely leaves me a conflicted man. I hope we can bring him to Boise State in this case. Unfortunately, it's time to start cutting losses. Jamison Vaughn off my board. Cheeseman losing him out in a big way to Oregon. In the meantime, we have a week one matchup against the Georgia Southern Eagles. Here we go. First game in Dynasty College Football 2025. We are at Georgia Southern on the road. Boise State looking to do their thing and start off the year 1-0. I think this could be a game where we just get right. I'm not going to count out the Eagles, but it's not like we're playing Oregon yet. There's Genty. There's Nelson. The boys running onto the field. First play of the game. Going to just go right to no one opening drive already getting dropped back for a sack we're gonna go across the middle to lauder game definitely plays and feels much different than ncaa 14 so we're gonna have to be smart go ahead and use the slant intercepted bro that is gonna be a site we're gonna have to get used to on defense here they just go with a handoff draw on third and ten and we don't track him down there. He busts right through us. Maybe this third and five will go our way instead of that last one. So he's going deep for the end zone. That should be picked off. Yes, sir. Tubner, way to haul it in. Turnovers are going to need to be something we iron out here. Let's go to Genty and get our first score of the season. The little Texas route worked. 
Malachi to Gen T could be a combo that is unparalleled. The pressure came in fast, and I'm throwing another pick. What am I doing, man? This is making me feel silly. Pick six for Georgia Southern. Losing by 10, turnovers have not been our friend, and Lautner is our friend. Touchdown on the RPO. Thankfully, second half offense has been a lot kinder to us as we just miss a wide open cables. Third and three, just going to take the crosser underneath and get the first and goal. We got dark horse candidate Ashton Genty for a reason. Let's use him slipping in through, muscling his way forward. That was big. Using the bow and arrow too. Up by four, defense been doing their thing in this one. Back to Genty. See if he can get a lane and break free. Camper got a step on his man. Going deep, trying to connect. We got him, and he's breaking free of one tackler and two monster touchdown to just give us the insurance. Victory formation, nice quality of life improvement here. Taking a knee just finishes off the game, and it's over. Boise State wins week one over Georgia Southern 31-17. After our first win, we got some more skill points, so I'm going to really double down on DBs and just go four for four on them. It's Oregon week. We are on the road, and this is going to be tough against number three Oregon, probably one of the best rosters in the game, two of the fastest receivers. I'm about to show you all why this game can be difficult. We threw interceptions against Georgia Southern. Wait till we play against Oregon. But before we get there, I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to discover what our prospects are interested in. Like this guy, Bushman, pro potential, playing style and proximity to home. So let's go ahead and remove, send the house, add a hard sell, and then look for those exact three entrances, which should be right here, the clutch. So let's give him that hard pitch. Tacking on a little DM, it doesn't hurt, gets more influence, and we need all the influence we can get as we're trying to make a run against Utah. Just so you all can see, upgrading my recruiting skills in the DB secondary department gives me 75 hours for any corner rather than the standard 50, which would be handy if I found especially high level gems in that department. But I haven't found any of those guys quite yet. So the focus turns to Oregon as we're on the road in a very hostile environment. The ducks mean business. Stadium Pulse in the top right indicates this is the 24th toughest place to play in the nation. Genty just could not hang on. Jabbar Muhammad was on that. And as you can see, the kicking meter is insane. Moving fast, twitching and everything. I think I had a good take on it, except I was inaccurate on the placement. Talk about learning curves. That is going to be one of them from the kicking department. Dylan Gabriel under pressure. Defense doing a good job in the first quarter. Now it's the second quarter. They need to play tough. Ahmed brought the action on that last one. I'm going to need him to do it again. Unfortunately, they're this close to scoring. How are we going to stop the Ducks at the one yard line? That is the ever pressing question. Again, they're going up the middle. He got it this time. All Ducks early in this one. Not much we can speak about except a pick six right to the man that was just waiting in his zone. You blink and next thing you know, the game is 24-0 and we're just scrambling for anything. Getting dominated in every asset of the game right now. It is hard out here to find anything. Start of the fourth quarter it's fourth down it is a 23 point deficit just showing y'all that the ducks are a tough place and team to play against even with that touchdown trying to keep the dream alive with a little bit of a run in the fourth technically we still got all our timeouts and four minutes to work with so it's not over over yet as we go to Dubar, the running back trying to get shifty first and goal. Going to go with the screen, pops it up. That thing just hung up there. Wow. Second and goal, looking for anyone. He's going to get hounded back there. That was extremely fast pursuit. Can hardly see the visual art. It's all wiggly. The lines are squiggling. Just looking for anyone. Capels, no one. No one got open. This is my last chance. We're going to go with the RPO slant. Bolt's got it. Surprised the defense is keeping us in this thing still. As we go across to Dubar, we're just a few yards out. Another fourth down stand for the Ducks. We'll go to our tight end, and we were hit. Might as well try to get some pride points, but throw a pick instead. Y'all believe me now, it's difficult to play on the road, for sure. Somewhat of a comeback, I guess you could say, but... It was all done by the second quarter. Player of the week was Braxton Felly in the Mountain West. Congrats to him. Didn't matter much in that Oregon game. All of a sudden, Bushman, who we were in the lead for, has a deal breaker. We have an F, apparently, in playing style, and he needs a B-, minus. so we're not going to get this guy. Going to go ahead and hard sell Dom Stark, the four-star receiver. We got his interest lined up. It's just a matter of finding the right button. 
which is right there. TV time for Dom. He wants to be a star. Ready to do the same thing for Ty Burrow, the gem DT. Let's go ahead and hard sell him also on TV time. Anthony, just like the rest, they're all the same when they're coming to Boise, huh? They must want the TV time. Mafu, the athlete here, just wants to get to work, and I appreciate that blue-collar mentality. Losing in the battle for Jimmy against KU, we know what he's interested in, so let's go ahead and give it to him. TV time. Teddy wants to be the coach's fave, so you can go ahead and do us a favor and commit. Going ahead and getting Mafu on the board to visit us. Same thing for Dom. On the blue turf in this one, Washington State visiting us. Here we go first look at a home game for Boise State. It's time to bleed blue, man. Here comes the hammer, the flags. Where's Buster Bronco? Not in the game, sadly, but we do got a ruckus crowd against the Cougars, man. They're a technically a better team on paper. Three and one. Good start for these guys. Let's go ahead and show them what's up. And we can show them what's up on the opening drive here, getting right into red zone territory about to score. Relying a lot on guys like Ash and Genty to carry the rock and get us to where we need to go. Looking to cash in. There's Genty out of the backfield, holding on and reaching across. Touchdown. There he is. Let's go. Hit the gritty. I believe two four-star recruits are visiting. So if we win, we'll get a nice little bonus here. I'm going to go lob one up to our man Caples, who comes down with it. Big touchdown. Up two touchdowns early in this one. So far, so good against the Cougars, nailing that 45-yarder. To be honest, it feels like the Cougars were left on the bus or something because they did not come to play today. That man was lost in the sauce, too. Capels all around him, looking to expose the secondary. Still got two minutes left in the first half. They're going to need to turn it around before this thing gets out of hand. It's already leaning in that direction. Going to take a deep shot. Do we have him? We got Bolt over the star DB. Touchdown, 38-0 right now. Are you kidding me? Bolt with a bolt strike. I guess you could say we were upset about that loss to Oregon because we're back in with a vengeance. Mason Randolph dislocated his shoulder. That is unfortunate. Get well soon, buddy, because when we're on the blue turf, it is always a tough place to play for opponents. Camper secures it. Up 52-3, to three and we're not done yet. If this doesn't get prospects excited about coming here, I don't know what will. Uh-oh, that pressure came in so fast. Strip sack, fumble. Is he going to take it back? Malachi looking to make a tackle. Nope, he's out of there. I did not see that coming. Genty, though, playing heroic defense, stopping him at the two. I guess you could say every dog has their day because we're right back at it again. Touchdown, Lauder. To be honest, I've lost track of how many touchdowns we have at this moment. I'm just surprised backups aren't filling in. On this play right here, Malachi Nelson dumps it to Lauder for his ninth touchdown pass of the game. Almost 500 passing yards, no ends. Talk about a night and day difference. Such a close game, am I right? 69 points, very nicely done by the boys. That was an all-time performance. I mean, check out Malachi Nelson's numbers here. If I'm not getting Insta commits from the recruits after that, I don't want them. Vance in the week, this is the moment of truth. And what did I say? Ty Burrow, gem defensive tackle going to be playing around a four-star level is committed and dom stark as well our first four-star receiver give it up for your mountain west player of the week malachi and not the national player of the week so that's got me curious who got the reward over him it was a mean green eagle receiver 194 yards in five touchdown catches that's pretty good but when a qb throws nine td passes that would be my vote. 20 more coaching points. Just going to send it all the way into the receiving tree. Now we're maxed out for secondary and receivers. I think it's only fitting to turn our attention to the offensive line now. A look around the Mountain West. We see a few teams surprising early. Colorado State and Hawaii, both three and one. Somehow still gaining interest from Tyler Bushman. We're this close to securing the bar. But look at Oregon State come up the races. We can't give any more points. We're locked out by deal breaker style. So that sucks. Just filtered it to need scholarship because we added a few more guys to the board. Maybe it'd be worthwhile to go in on Brian Gage here. He is a hot topic for a lot of power schools. I don't know if we'll get him, but 
doesn't hurt to throw our name in the hat. As well as Kevin Thomas, the three star has no scholarships yet. Maybe I'll scout him out, see if he's worthwhile. He's a bust. How about the two star DB here? He plays true to a two star. Coming back to in my top five, looking for guys that need attention. Maybe Emmanuel Kalis should be the move. Let's get him a visit as early as possible. And then while we're at it, let's change our tactic by sending him the house. Actually, I take that back. I think we already know his interest. So let's just hard sell him right here, right now. Did you guess it? Man likes TV time. Must be a common thing for linebackers because this guy also values playing style when we're an F. So I don't feel like giving him a hard sell, he'll lock us out. Mafu has committed. He looks like a center when I thought he was an athlete. So that's good to know. We got an offensive lineman four star. So many points freed up. I might as well entertain the number one player in Wyoming, Paul Mayfield. Go ahead and clear this board a bit as well. More visits. Let's go. Coming in hot on Kona with the house and a 3 a.m. DM. Steve from Pocatello, Idaho. Let's contact the friends and family. We're all about keeping local talent. Darren Kenyon, on the other hand, we're going to lose him to Fresno State. So I'm going to chalk up my loss and use those points to go for Kona Chong, who is a little bit closer in the fray still. Let's send him the house and see what we can do. Locked out from a few guys. Let's just get them out of here. Oof, we got a lot of points going in on Cole. I think I just chalk it up, take him off. We wasted our time with Stevie. He didn't get in early. I wasn't sending points his way, and we lost a quarterback doing that as well. Ducks are stealing all our guys. Game week against Hawaii. Last week against Utah State, we took them out 38 to 23. Malachi Nelson, 288 passing yards, two touchdowns. Ashton Denty, 139 and two on the ground. This week going forward, we just landed Wingo out of California, the three-star DB, as well as another four-star linebacker from Littleton, Colorado. Definitely excited Keys looked past that deal breaker and gave us a chance anyway. Hawaii had a similar fate, 35-17. Malachi let it rip, 357 yards, three touchdowns, and Genty, another two on the ground. I'm impressed by the freshman quarterback. He is stepping up to the occasion like advertised. It was a bye week, but it didn't mean we stopped Cruton. Emmanuel Kalis, welcome to the team. Broncos moving ahead to 6-1 and one in the season. Let's Let's jump in against the Aztecs. We have a couple recruits visiting, so it's important we get it done on the blue. Another night game, primetime television, wearing all orange for this one. Aztecs are in for some trouble. Opening kickoff, nothing like a night game here in Boise, Idaho. It is something special. Six and one, already bowl eligible. We need to do better. And we're going to go down the sideline to Gen T. To start getting considerations for the 12 team playoff, we'll have to be the best group of five school out there. And that is our mission. I don't know about year one, but I knew Boise State was good in the Mountain West. So throughout this three part rebuild series here for Boise State, we'll probably take up the stakes just a bit, send them up to a power four at some point. The better this team gets, it'll become even easier in the Mountain West. It wasn't easy for Genty to hold on to that last one, nor was that field goal easy. If you mess up the kicking meter, you'll shank that thing so far right, it's not even funny. Here comes the quarterback on an option play, stopped behind the line. Third and six, looking like a handoff draw. We're there and deliver a crushing blow. Holding the Aztecs to three, he doinks it, but... Hold on, there's a flag. I believe we ran right into the kicker, so that might give him a first down. Well, that was extremely unfortunate, and we hate to see that. Tight end in motion. They're going with the run play. Boom. Goal line defense stepping up here against the Aztecs, looking to hold them down, and we can only do it for so long. You make the defense stay out there seven, eight plays, it's tough to keep them down forever. Same could be said about the Broncos, though. You can't keep these guys down forever as we're already up by a touchdown. Looking to pad the lead some more with a handoff here to Genty. Genty, the trusty workhorse, and we can hit him out of the backfield too because I know he'll get it for us. Aztec stack the box. We're still going to Genty anyway. Fighting, fighting. He didn't get in. Down to the inches mark. We're going to QB sneak it with Malachi. Who gets in? Points here would go a long way if we can find him, and we're not going to find him throwing into double coverage like that. Third quarter, going to pull away here once Genty plunges into the end zone. It's going to feed Genty either way. He got in there touchdown. By the time this thing was over, 52 points were dropped on the Aztecs head. That is game. There he is again, Malachi, player of the week against the Aztecs. Kona from Illinois, welcome to the squad. Snagged him there at the end despite a late push from Louisville in Northern Illinois. Herbert Gum stepped up in the win over Nevada. Search my way through the prospect list, I found Tyrone Treggs, a safety four-star that has no offers and not much interest. Same thing here with Ben McLeod, Trevor Leber, Louis Balducci, Manu 
Ursua, Calvin Jewel, and Prince Brewer. Sorry, Zach Kaminsky too. That is a lot of four stars not getting offers right now. Just because I'm curious, let's look at the five star panel. Yeah, everyone's locked up. That makes sense. A couple three stars in similar situations. So I'll add them to my board. Step one, added them to the board. Check. Step two, offer them all scholarships. See who bites. Going up that list. We are interested in pretty much all of them. Starting here with Tyrone Treg. Scout him out. He plays true to that four star rating. We need DT, so I'm going to look at that next and the scouting and bang, Manu, a four-star gem. That'll play true to a five-star. So with whatever points left, I'm just going to DM him and search the social media. San Jose State was up next, but in the meantime, Juan Alfonso is coming to Boise. We had hope for one week because Penn State swooped in and stole Manu from us. Doesn't mean we still can't hit it big with guys like Lewis. Just kidding. Calvin, maybe you? Jam. Making our way into the top 25 for the first time after a convincing win, 56-21 over San Jose State. Looking to round out the season with a game against Wyoming, and we should be in to the championship game. Calvin Jewell, the gem, about to lose him to Texas. Treggs, on the other hand, cruising away. Here we go. Lester Connors, a three-star, not getting much motion. Gem, give him the house. Nine wins in a row since the Oregon implosion. Now their in-state rival, the Beavs, are here to play Boise. Should be a good matchup. One of the Pac-2 remaining teams looking to play a lot of Mountain West opponents this year. They're still decent. They lost a lot of guys to the portal, and I think the conference shakedown didn't help their situation, but don't ever count out the Beavs. You especially shouldn't count them out when they're eight and three on the season, and how did I not user lurk that? Felt pretty confident I was gonna pick it off, but I guess we were just out of reach. Number two is within reach of the touchdown. Down quick, seven zip. They had their fun, up 10-0 now. It's time to get to work. Gonna audible into a favorable play boom across the middle camper just getting a little jukey with it and now we can go ahead and finish it off lobbing it up to capels touchdown in the back of the end zone i have fond memories of simming in ncaa 14 and getting like a 20 touchdown year from capels we're gonna need him to step up in this one because as you can tell the beeves are moving it and we have a lot of work to do it's the two-minute drill. I'm thinking maybe Genty can spring loose and get us down the field with a juke. Maybe a spin. Oh, he spun the wrong way. Maybe that was my bad. Did y'all catch the pancake from the left tackle on that last one? It was nuts. Love it when the O-lineman just absolutely wrecks shop on the opponent. We got all day to lob this one up to camper. I was worried that one was going to float for far too long as I lob it up and over. What a completion to camper. That was perfection on the route the stop and go down by 10 we gotta find someone and there's capels first and goal i'm gonna get risky i'm gonna run a qb draw and see if anything opens up good block keep fighting touchdown home crowd getting behind our guys here trying to run a blitz absolutely no pressure thankfully the coverage was blanketed fourth and two pass midfield we're definitely gonna go for it try to keep this thing alive and i just had to take a shot we almost had the completion Third and goal, here we go. Looking to hold it down. He's going outside. I totally thought he had it there. Now it's at the inches hash. I can only imagine it was obvious to go up the middle. Fourth and eight. We need this conversion and it's not going to happen. Intercepted. It looks like the Beavs are going to spoil us on the blue. Unfortunate. They were too tough. Well, we got a chance for an onside kick and it goes right into their hands. Able to run out the clock, we fall short. That was a heartbreaker. After the defeat, we're still in the top 25 and we got the Mountain West Championship game, so it's time to get right. Rico out of Pueblo, Colorado. Yes, sir. We are at risk of losing some guys to the portal. The bar isn't crazy high, but Casey, the left tackle, that's the biggest one to watch out for. Championship weekend, we need to secure it against Fresno State. As it stands right now in the playoffs, we're projected to get in with the 12th seed and take on Notre Dame. Getting in there in year one would be a huge accomplishment but trust me they are not going to give it to us easily as we're in the mountain west championship game and did i just see green turf oh my goodness boise state green grass some little visual bug here in the championship game apparently unless they just install green grass in one week prior to the championship game i don't think that's likely so this is exclusive access to what boise state looks like without blue turf and i must admit the blue turf is a very fitting feature loki i feel like they need the blue turf to stay on brand and we're throwing a big pick receiver in motion let's see if we can pick up the first down here just gonna settle for points and it's no sure thing with the kicking meter 
thankfully we snag it down by two scores in our own red zone it's important we cash in so we can make it a one score game we're gonna hurry up to the line let genty plunge right ahead i think he's the right man for the job defense helped us out in a big way and we have another shot to go ahead and get some more points big big stick right there fourth and one need the absolute conversion right here no sir sponge dialed up the second half adjustments and it has been working to perfection right now we got the lead back and our swagger back thank goodness had an open receiver but fresno state's defensive line got in extremely quick doink and because of that we're now in jeopardy to get the championship game and what is the offensive line doing that is unacceptable maybe genty can go ahead and get us some yards back realistically we probably could have punted but i'm feeling pressed for time so i'm just gonna let one fly to cam camper as he just gets pi right there beautiful way to get the flag on fourth down you can't do that absolute drive saver right there and i can't even get the pass off fresno state defense playing really inspired or something they're double teaming that guy over there we can hit the cross there to caples he's got speed to take off just maneuvering his way through let's go see if we can find something again yep caples why not if it worked the first time check down supreme right now that's what we do caples way to zig it and get into a good spot this is a crucial spot here nelson's gonna have to step up and scramble i see a wide open guy just lobbing it in touchdown caples that's how you come through in the clutch in the mountain west championship game and that is exactly what you don't want to see from the opponent Less than 30 seconds and still a timeout or two is plenty of time for a team to get down the field and make something happen. Mikey Keene, in my opinion, is a good quarterback and he can do it just as good as anyone else in the Mountain West. Best part of this right now, though, is we just burnt their final timeout. So they're going to have to make a play or it's over. Huge sack. That's probably going to dwindle the clock. I don't think they can get a snap off. We'll see how fast they go. Four, three. They get one snap off, right? One. Nope. That's game. Broncos, Mountain West champions. That's how we do it. That is true to the blue, even though we're on the green. Make way for the champs. I know it's ironic. It's a rebuild and we already have a Mountain West championship. So the stakes are just going to have to get higher going forward. Got a fullback to commit to us from Las Vegas, Nevada. Your Heisman winner in this one is Caden Salter out of Liberty. Okay. Best running back award goes to Genty. All right. That stat line wasn't anything out of the world, but we'll take it. And now we get a college football playoff matchup in the first round against number one seed Notre Dame. So this could be the end of the line or start of a Cinderella. Got job offers from a few schools, but we're loyal to the blue. Getting into the college football playoffs already gave me some bonus points to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade at least a tier one on all of these. So we get less time to fully scout them out going forward. Now I'll dial in on linebackers and blocking. Sir Sponge finished third on the coach of the year poll. And in general, a very good year for Malachi, 44 touch touchdown passes 3,800 yards genty as we saw got it done camper bolt and caples all double digit touchdown catches on defense herbert gums with 11 and a half sacks and yes sir andrew simpson a linebacker with five interceptions round one college football playoffs again against Notre Dame. They have the home field advantage, so we're going to be in for a treat. A perfect 12-0 from them this season. This is a very tough place to play, so we're going to have to have our A game. Yeah, the momentum is crazy right now, but there we go. Out to Bolt almost broke a tackle and took it but it's pretty sweet that we got here in year one of the rebuild and look at that interception oh man he got up and got it somehow we're all tied up here in the third i don't know the button there it was all squiggly it's gonna audible to a tight end cross i don't know if they're gonna get the message here i hope they do some early movement on the line let's hope they run their routes as i asked them to lotter good snack hurrying up to the line i called for slants and it looks like they stuck to it first down i'm gonna go inside zone and hand it off to genty i think it's a good time to let the best running back of the nation lower his head see if we can do it again nope they didn't get the memo it's back to a pass they did not hear my audible so we'll dump it to genty instead touchdown coming in to notre dame and silencing the crowd just a bit they're blowing up so many plays right now it's actually very difficult to get any momentum and he's just out of here shedding tackles wow just like that round one of the playoffs has been a movie as genty comes through receiving 38 yard field goal but in this hostile environment that is still no sure thing i'm still working on figuring out how to time this right perfect overshot it but it didn't matter this is obscene right now we're on pace to upset the one seed notre dame at their home stadium every dog has their day and it looks like it might be our day across the middle camper 
could not hold on. I was really hoping he would get to it. Camper, though. Revenge. Touchdown. Second and goal. Handoff. Genty. Finding a hole. It's over, man. Touchdown. Unbelievable. The number one seed upset in convincing fashion. 45-28. How about them Broncos living to see another day. 360 passing yards, five touchdowns for Malachi. Really did not expect this in year one. The stage is set for a Peach Bowl. It is NC State, Boise State. There she is, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl trophy. That is what's at stake going against the Wolfpack. No disrespect to the Wolfpack. They've done a great job getting to this point, but I think out of all the opponents remaining, this is probably our best chance. They are the four seed. We are the 12th seed, clearly an underdog. Let's get it going. First drive of the game, dumping one out, pick six style. Look at that. Mm, scrumptious. Opportunity here to atone for what I have done. Going across to Lautner. Flag on the play. Man coverage. Bolt. You're not messing with my guy. Let's go. Touchdown. Looks like we're in for a shootout this game. This time I want Caples to go and make a play. Beautiful. When Malachi and the guys get hot, do not mess with us. That's what we're talking about. Seriously, though, our team is getting hot at the perfect time in playoffs. Football, man, that's what it's up. No better time to get everyone on the team hot in a big game with the Peach Bowl. So it's second and 15. It looks like Camper's got some space. Bingo. I guess you could say favorable conditions in this one as we have 50 points on the day covering our zones. He has to go big in for it all, it falls short. Once again, I just want to reiterate, this was not what I was expecting in year one of the build. At the one yard line, Mono Imano e Genti is gonna win. There it is, 57-31 beat down. We're well on our way. Let's get it, man. Revenge game against the Ducks. They absolutely handled us in Eugene, Oregon. So maybe we get them back here. Winner of this game takes on the winner of Georgia, Ohio State. So it's gonna be an action-packed finish. Time to keep racking them up. Cotton Bowl, you're next. You're coming home to Boise because these Ducks are about to get hit with a blind side. This is not the same team from week two. Now I I have heard some people complain about the sim. Maybe there's something going on that needs to be fine-tuned a bit more. Because really, putting up that many points against Notre Dame in the first game felt a little unrealistic. And then 57 against NC State, that's super impressive. All things considered, Oregon should be a heavy favorite. Let's see if the sim gets us any additional help. It looks like the defense has come to play and the Ducks are shut out through the first couple quarters. Like, this is what I'm talking about. We're up by three in the fourth quarter against the Ducks. It just feels a little fluky right now, but that touchdown was not fluky. Anything but. Do your thing, Caples. This is crazy, man. We're up by 10. They're going for it on the fourth down play. They do get it. I could have sworn they got the first down. Instead, they call it a turnover. They said he did not have his feet in bounds. Ducks down by three. They're going for the onside kick, and we recover. So this game is wraps. Cotton Bowl victory. We're in the national championship game in year one. I thought I was coming into this with a rebuild on my hands. What is this, man? Once again, I feel impelled to tell you all this is the hardest difficult. I haven't done anything to make the game easier. Capels player of the week after his three touchdown performance. So it's the national championship game against Ohio State in our first season. I get our team is on a run and feeling the momentum, but this just happens to feel a little fluky. I, I didn't do anything to rebuild the team. I just took our current roster. We ran through the Mountain West and all of a sudden got on a streak to get to the national championship. I wish I could believe this in real life as a Bronco fan, but honestly, Ohio State, that's realistic. Boise State, mm, not so much. So let's see if we can take it to Will Howard and the Buckeyes in this one. Will Howard, Buckeyes, third and 21. He's got a streaker right there that was open for a minute. The sack comes in and knocks him down. Potential for better luck here on their second try. They have a couple options and yeah. Ohio State receivers are built different. Sending in the pressure. Will Howard felt that one, but still had plenty of time. Down by a score, we want to respond, so we'll throw this ball to Camper. Camper was just camping out for that one, and we're going to get sacked. I could just sense it coming from a mile away, but in this case, we might have a play on our hands. Absolutely not. Three minutes left in the game. We're still flirting with the win, and Ohio State is about to cash in and get some points. Looking to make a stop, sending it and it's not stopping it. Fourth and 15, Boise State's hopes and dreams on the line here, couldn't get it off. That is gonna seal our fate. Congratulations to the Buckeyes. The Boise State miracle run in year one, 
got so close and it looks like we're actually gonna have to keep rebuilding and get our team here in a future year because if we won the national championship in the first season i think it would have made for an awkward conversation like how do i keep rebuilding a team that's already won it all so for boise fans i'm sorry but for rebuild fans the show goes on ashton genty declaring for the draft i guess that makes sense there's nothing we can do to persuade him he is a first round projected pick there he goes congrats to ashton and a big congrats to ahmed as well fifth round pick transfer portal opened up all the four stars have us locked out so we can't go and get any of those guys we can focus on a few three stars that are interested that'll help us out as well transfer for running back might not be a bad idea with Genty leaving us. And then as you can see, we have a lot of positions of need to fill. Same process applies here for transfer guys. We just got to be quick with our influence. So we're going to go ahead and do what we can. We're targeting a handful of guys in the portal, so it doesn't hurt to just give it all we got. I would like Birdsell as a running back to come in and spell the work from Dubar. During this time, you don't want to forget about your high school prospects because if you do, other teams will probably go in and try to take them. So for guys like Lester, we got a hard sell and contact his friend and family. Jamal Baskerville values proximity to home. We are not even close for the Florida guy. And here we go. They're starting to come in. Middle linebacker Tubbs, Treggs, free safety, a four-star. Alvin Jewell, another free safety four-star. So the secondary, we can play around with some position changes. Dang, the running back we wanted is seriously considering Oregon. So I got to take up my recruiting a notch. We see two of his interests, but I'm going to gamble and go for the third. It's either conference prestige or facilities. And man, I'm going to go ahead and just take a wild guess. I'm going to say facilities because the Mountain West isn't a power conference. Got to get him in quickly on a visit as well, doing everything we can to influence the game time to see how well my persuasion paid off we got a four-star defensive tackle we got our right guard gem beautiful we got malcolm bell i think that's a transfer corner hunter barth another transfer i don't think we have the running back lined up yet where is he big week but we got more ground to make on the running back looks like we guessed right though on the hard sell evan from wyoming middle linebacker from washington Derek from cal james from indiana patrick from penn right end from cal unfortunately lost the running back to oregon four star dt he was a bust but we'll take it. Got Baskerville, the receiver from Tampa that didn't want to be far from home. There goes that plan. National Signing Day, the 28th best class in the nation with seven four stars, 17 three stars. We'll take that. Excited to see how the new recruits pan out as Mafu here could play offensive line or defensive line. I think I'll save athletes to the end just to be sure we're good everywhere else. I think this is a tight end glitch. There's no way we have eight guys on the roster. Our freshman gem guard is only a 67 overall, but okay. Demarius Keys, four star freshman, 70 73 overall off the bat and yeah those safeties we snagged 74 73 overall i'm gonna move the other one to strong safety it's a new era at defensive tackle as we got some guys that are high overall i almost breezed over the fact that dom stark the four star one of our first commits is also a 75 overall sorting it by freshman and going down the list i see a handful of 70 overall plus contributors when it comes to picking spots for our athletes i'm gonna look for some depth opportunities tubs will go back up at left outside linebacker mafu here can play a variety of positions and well wouldn't hurt to get him at left end that position's a little weak that leaves emmanuel kalis yeah i don't know what to do with this dude training results are in up to a three and a half prestige 84 overall 85 offense 84 defense on the come up our roster is full five guys over the limit so i'm going to encourage some guys to transfer so we can make some space and that leads us right into preseason where we'll set up the board and get after it for year two. However, that's going to have to wait until part two of this deep dynasty rebuild mini series. These episodes are going to be different than my full rebuilds to come down the road since I'm going more in depth and detail for the process of what I'm doing. Keep soaking up with King Sponge, hit that subscribe button and college football 25 content is just getting started.